I love a good redemption arc in football, when once great players who have been tossed aside and written off rise once more from the ashes to touch greatness again and show why they were once so highly rated to begin with. English goalkeeper and dandruff enthusiast Joe Hart just completed his own beautiful tale of redemption this year, so join me as I go over the story of the vindication of Joseph Hart. Following a successful loan spell with Birmingham City, where his performances over the course of the 09-10 season saw the 23-year-old Hart named as Birmingham's Player of the Year, Hart returned to Man City and quickly established himself as the first choice goalkeeper for the citizens, putting in a succession of superb performances against the likes of Liverpool and Spurs, and pulling off a string of stunning saves on his way to winning the 2011 Golden Glove Award for the most Premier League clean sheets that season with 18. During this season, he was installed as the number one for England's national team, a position he would keep until 2017. He would maintain his outstanding form and retain his Golden Glove Award in 2012, as he also helped City to an historic and dramatic first Premier League title, and although Hart would win the Golden Glove for the third time in a row in 2013, mistakes have begun to creep into his game as City agonisingly relinquished their title to fierce City rivals Manchester United on goal difference, with notable blunders coming against Sunderland, West Ham and most devastatingly Wigan in the FA Cup final, which City would lose 1-0 consigning them to a miserable trophy this season, throughout which manager Roberto Mancini had been highly critical of Hart and his form. 2014 would see Hart and City reclaim the Premier League title, although Hart's form continued to falter as more and more of his high profile mistakes hit the headlines, leading to him even being dropped for a period of time. In 2015, he won his fourth and final Premier League Golden Glove award, despite rumblings continuing in the background that he was a bit of a liability. And indeed, the arrival of Pep Guardiola saw Hart unceremoniously dropped as the Spaniard had clearly decided he didn't want him between the six. With another high profile blunder for England against Wales, added to the fact that Hart didn't exactly have a reputation for being good with the ball at his feet, something Guardiola requires from his keeper and his teams in the way that they play, convincing the new gaffer that he needed to find alternative options and goal. What followed were unsuccessful loan moves to Torino and West Ham respectively, as the high profile howler started to pile up and confidence in Hart's ability to perform at the highest level began to diminish, before he was sold to Burnley in 2018. But this spell did not revive his faltering and flailing career as he made only 24 appearances in two seasons. By the time he signed for Spurs as backup to captain Hugo Lloris, it was clear that the last few years with declining performances and a lack of game time had taken their toll on Hart, whose confidence was at its lowest point and was perhaps disillusioned with some aspects of life as a footballer. So, when after a year at Spurs, having only made 10 appearances for the club, with 10 of those coming in the Europa League and again two more howlers against Lask, incoming manager Nuno Espirito Santo called Hart into his office. Deep down, the keeper probably knew what was coming, although he didn't perhaps expect it to be delivered in such a brutal manner, as according to Hart, Nuno savagely tore him to shreds, telling him, I'll speak first. Let's be absolutely clear, no matter what happens, you'll not kick a ball this year. In my opinion, we all reach a point in our career where the body won't allow you to play football. We're at it now. I would not feel comfortable with you playing one minute for me. The ball's too quick for you. You're too old. You're not moving. You've got no strength in your body. So at the relatively young age for a keeper of 35, it seemed as if it was curtains for Hart, who obviously didn't agree with Santo's assessment of him and his capabilities. Then the call came which changed everything. The call from newly appointed Celtic boss Ange Postacoglu. Just for a bit of context here, Celtic have had a bit of an omni shambles with keepers over the past couple of seasons, with the £5 million signing of Greek stopper Vasilis Barkas proving to be a dreadful acquisition, as it quickly became apparent that he was incapable of saving even the simplest of shots, as his hologram hands became a source of scorn for Celtic fans in a miserable season. The situation was made all the more ludicrous and painful due to the fact that former keeper Craig Gordon, Scotland's current number one and an all-round excellent and goalie was deemed to be surplus to requirements and released in 2020. Postacoglu gave Barkas one last chance, but another howler against Mitchelland in the Champions League qualifiers was all that the Aussie needed to see to confirm that he had to explore other options. This is where Joe Hart comes in, and the player has revealed the interactions between Postacoglu and himself which led to him signing for £1 million last year. I'll be honest, and I said it when I came here, at that point, football wasn't doing everything they had done for me in my life. I don't know where my thoughts were with it, because I'm very committed to what I do. I told told Ange when I spoke to him that I didn't quite know how to feel about football at that moment. He understood, and he was very simple in what he said. He told me, if you come here, you'll be treated with a lot of respect and will get a lot of responsibility. Ange also said, regardless of anything, I believe in you as a keeper. No matter who you are, you need to hear that. You need to know someone has confidence with you. And Hart has certainly repaid that confidence with a fine individual season, and his experienced presence in the Delt dressing room helped Celtic to a league and cup double. Hart again found his prime shot-stopping form, making a number of 
absolutely world-class saves both domestically and in Europe, all while playing in an Ange Postacoglu system which is built around playing out from the back in dangerous situations, something which Pep Guardiola said he couldn't do. And yet, admittedly, I can't have been the only Celtic fan who has been close to cardiac arrest watching him try to do this sometimes, but overall, he has kept the howlers to a bare minimum and returned to the level of performance that saw him being touted as the best goalie in the country at one point. Long may it 